All right, we are going live officially with Caroline Lewis Jones. I'm so excited. I wish that we were actually dancing together in real life because I have seen you dance and been like, okay, hey, goals. Like, seriously, right. just put me in class. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm Welcome. Excited. I'm excited that you're here. We're going to make sure this is working. Um, you guys let us know uh, if it is going live. Oh, now we're going live. Now we're officially, oh, three, two, one. Oh, now we're officially live. Okay. okay. <laughs> you guys, we are going live with Caroline Lewis Jones. We did a dance for you before we went live. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we went, we're just warm, we're getting warmed up. We're getting warmed up. This is Caroline Lewis Jones from South Carolina. So she's going to have a little twang and I'm, it might rub off on me because I'm from Texas. So welcome <laughs> in, you guys, and let us know that you're here. Um, I'm super excited to do this conversation because I think it's going to bring a really fresh, honestly necessary perspective um, to take back 2020, something we haven't really covered much of. We did one session on like the importance of weight training for us. Um, which is also, yeah, it's just sometimes you forget how much just a good 20 minute workout actually is for your mood. But what, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about nutrition and holistic health with Caroline Lewis Jones, who is also a holistic health coach in addition to being the artistic director of Unbound. She's on staff with Adrenaline for a while now. And Adrenaline is a dance convention that I, I went to when I was a wee little someone way back. <laughs> So Caroline, enough of me chatting, chatting it up. Thanks for being with us tonight. And yeah, just let us know you're here, you guys. You know that your entry into the giveaway for tonight for dance attire from Gina Pirro is a question for Caroline. Can you, Gina. what's that? I love Gina, she's awesome. Yes, okay, you know Gina's so fun, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I just connected her with her through this event. It was like, okay, we're lifers together, you're awesome. So Caroline, I'm gonna stop talking. Could you introduce us to who you are and what you do and just give us some backstory on your dance journey? Please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm Caroline. I live in Columbia, South Carolina. I am 39, almost 40, the big 4-0, which is crazy. Um, I'm a mom to live two little boys, Cruz and Ashby. Cruz is six and Ashby is four. Married to a great guy named Hans. We met, I really met him when I was like 12, but we've been together now for 17 years. Um, actually met my sister and uh, danced at a wonderful studio called Southern Strut growing up. So I was a competition kid, um, moved to New York when I was 18 and pursued a career there for about six years. Um, and within that journey, um, danced for some really fun people, Mia Michaels, Brooke Notary, and then did, you know, stuff like NSYNC and um, some videos and commercials and just cool stuff like that. It was fun. Um, but my, that was really where I found my passion for contemporary dance though. And really when contemporary was actually really unfolding, you know, mm -hmm. you're gonna hear my kids scream in the background. So that's gonna be <laughs> happening. Um, and, uh, in, within that journey, I discovered how much I loved cross training. No one ever talked to me about cross training growing up. I just danced and my, um, I really wanted to join a gym when I moved to New York. And so I discovered a gym called Equinox. I worked behind the desk. Um, went to Marymount Manhattan um, School of the Arts there in Manhattan, not for dance, but for communications and oh, wow. just dancing my butt off at Broadway Dance Center and Steps and connect with a lot of really wonderful um, choreographers and, you know, friends of mine now. Um, but I, that's where I really found my true passion for, man, I really love training people. So I got certified and worked at Equinox for a couple of years as a personal trainer. And then several years later, got um, certified as a holistic you know health coach i call it plant-based lifestyle coaching i am the dreaded vegan word okay. um, yeah yeah Go for do it. a lot of plant-based lifestyle coaching and just the importance of eating more fruits and vegetables and real food and um my mom passed away 15 years ago from metastatic breast cancer and she was sick most of my life and really the day she passed that was kind of my aha moment of what else do i want to do with my life i love dance i love performing i love doing all that but I really, really want to educate people on prevention. And, you know, we work really and we train really hard as dancers, but for the most part, we don't rest. We don't have adequate nutrition. And when we exercise, we actually do damage to our bodies. It's called oxidative stress, free radical production. 
So when I learned all these things, I was like, man, like, this is crazy that I don't know these things. You know, we think as dancers, we can train for seven hours and go eat whatever the heck we want, but it's just not the case. It's actually, it's, it's, it's actually can cause more damage, believe it or not. Wow. So I met a woman named Tony Branner. She's an exercise physiologist in Charlotte, North Carolina. I was introduced to um, something called Juice Plus, got connected in with that community called Health Made Simple. And so Juice Plus and Health Made Simple has been a part of my life now for 16 years. And just something, uh, resources and solutions that I share within my health coaching, but also to dancers that are just, and athletes and moms, because I'm a mom now, they're yeah. just struggling to get what they need you know for their for themselves yeah. so i'm all about the 360 of the dancer the me and apollo apollo performance um casey and brie they're wonderful friends of mine yeah they're compressed box that are phenomenal and we we talk about the healthy happy whole dancer so it really is all those points right it's it's you know moving our bodies getting adequate nutrition rest sleep um hydration psychological you know it, it really is the whole gamut so i really try to incorporate that in my teaching and all that stuff cool that's yeah that's awesome that was thorough that just made me super hungry to ask you more questions but jeremy cool. jeremy really introduced you to me as that the 360 like caring caring for the whole of the dancer um you were the first person that came to mind when i asked him who in your community carries this the most so um, it's really cool to hear you talk about your journey with that and how just the heart behind it, it's actually really personal and it's something you also provide for your community. Um, it's just like from your heart. So I love that. It's really cool. Um, I am so curious, honestly, <laughs> I'm just going to go in with the personal question because I want to hear you talk about oxidative stress. That really sparked my interest. You said working out and being active. I think, you know, I've, I've done my level of study, but not, I'm, yeah, I can't rock the word vegan yet, but maybe some seasons in my life, right? I never, I don't, I don't think being vegan is for everybody. Truthfully, it's just yeah. like, for me, that's what makes me feel the best. I feel the strongest, you know, it's like you hit almost 40 and I honestly, as I age, I actually feel better. It's interesting. And I really think it's because of lifestyle and, you know, what I, and I'm not crazy. Like I, I love fun foods. That's just the way that I've now discovered how you can eat healthy, but also have fun when you eat, you know, just different ingredients and, mm -hmm. um, you know, being more mindful of that. So every time we breathe, obviously oxygen is essential for life. We're sitting here right now and we're breathing. And then we, when we exercise and dance, we breathe even more. Mm -hmm. Think about you're breathing for two you're creating a life mm -hmm. so oxygen is essential for life but there's actually a byproduct of oxygen and it's called a free radical and free radicals are unstable molecules these unstable molecules again called free radicals are missing an electron just one electron so they go to your good healthy cells in your body and molecules and they steal electrons mm -hmm. so then therefore that good stable molecule is like oh well it's sad it's like when you cut open an apple, what does it do? It oxidizes, it turns brown. So imagine that like your cell, it turns brown. Oh, wow. If you leave these free radicals and if you, if you create a lot of free radicals and you don't do anything about it, things can happen down the road. This is what causes our skin to wrinkle. It can cause us to have poor performance with, you know, as athletes. It can actually change our gene expression. It can cause DNA damage. Um, and then the last thing is that it um, um, can create disease in the body. And again, this isn't like, you know, a year. I mean, this is like years of unhealthy habits. But the neat thing is this, antioxidants, we know are good for us, right? Fruit, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, legumes, beans, seeds. We know these are good for us. What do they have? They have antioxidants. Antioxidants have an extra electron. So every time you eat a plant, it donates an electron back to the unstable molecule and it repairs it. Whoa. So, yeah, it's really neat. So you don't feel this happening inside your body, but it's happening like literally right now as we're speaking. So as an athlete, a lot of people are like eat protein, 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 and protein is essential to the body. Absolutely. But y'all, we are like protein obsessed. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Truthfully, you're getting plenty of protein through the foods that you're eating. I promise. What people don't get is they don't get enough fiber. 
In fact, this is sitting here. This is an excellent book. This is actually my friend, Dr. B, and he's one of the leading um, gastroenterologists in the country, but it's called Fiber Fueled. Read this book and it's just great education, but it's fiber that we need. Yeah. It's antioxidants that we need to repair our cells. Yeah. And that is true, in my opinion, prevention. Well, so after, and after I dance, I eat plant-based because plants are the only thing that have antioxidants. Meat, dairy, the salmon might have a little bit, but overall it's the plants and the colors of the rainbow and the diversity of plants that you're eating that's going to provide that foundation for you. That's so why that's, that's so fun. Thank you for such a simple breakdown. Even thinking about a brown apple makes me definitely want to go eat more kale. <laughs> You squeeze lemon onto an apple. Yeah. The alkalinity in the lemon actually neutralizes it. Prevents That's it. why, yeah, it takes away the, the oxidation. So, <laughs> so cool. yeah. guys, let us know if that was new information for you because it was totally new information for me. Um, so fun. Thank you, Caroline. Okay. Yeah. So, I would love to hear um, a little bit more if you couldn't, if you could um, dive in to what you've seen you know, you had an aha moment, right, in your life, and you're like, there's more I want to give back to the world. What are some of the things that you've seen, like with dancers in, you know, how you know, you, you started getting passionate about this physical side. Um, what are some of the issues that you've seen that you feel like you're addressing with nutrition, um, specifically in dancers? Um, well, the, the number one thing that I see that I feel is the biggest concern as a teacher and just thinking about the different generations that I've, not huge generations, but the different years I've taught, I think I've been teaching now for like 19 years and um, it's communication. It's the number one tool that I feel like, not tool, but just the one thing that I feel like it's affecting our performance. I feel like dancers don't know how to perform anymore. I feel like we're just kind of sucked dry and I'm in class and you know, and it's, it's not all dancers. There's those random few. But I remember when I was a senior in high school and there was like 24 of us, seven boys and the rest girls, and we just wanted to be the best versions of ourselves. We wanted to perform and have fun and entertain. And I miss seeing that in dancers today. And I honestly don't know what the answer is. I mean, I think this has a joy to do with it. In fact, I watched finally Social Dilemma the other night with my husband, because I was like, I just have to watch this thing. I knew what it was going to say, no. but after I watched the documentary on Netflix, you have to watch it, by the way. I was literally like, oh my God, like this is, yeah. this, this, is, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And we're being taught how to think and mm -hmm. being told how to feel and mm -hmm. I think if we can and this is I know it's necessary I do a lot of my work on here Ooh, I do a lot of my work on there honestly mm -hmm. I do but yeah how can we actually take a step back from it and walk away and I think it's causing a lot obviously a lot of psychological issues I think it you know emotional and I think it's creating a dancer that is void mm -hmm. with even eye contact communication hi I'm Caroline how are you doing I don't, I don't get that as much from dancers today. And, and I think I blame technology. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's sucking, it's sucking something out of us, our, our vulnerability, our true authentic self. Um, I think it, we're not as brave. Um, we're not as courageous. And I think it's because we don't know how to feel. We, we, we look at our phone for the likes and we look at our phone for the acceptance because do we actually accept ourselves for just for who I am? Just me. How do I feel about me? Yeah. And, and listen, I'm not perfect with how I feel about myself. It's, it's a struggle. I think any dancer goes yeah. through that, how we look, how we, mm -hmm. you know, I was earlier with a friend um, who's older, he's a little bit older than I am, a studio owner, um, Michael, that owns Juliana's in Michigan. And I just told him, I said, it's so interesting. Like I, you know, it's at my age, am I good enough? is my choreography good enough? It's all these judgmental things, you know, and I finally just have to go like, poofs be gone. <laughs> You're great, Caroline, you can do this. Hey, maybe you can't do all the crazy stuff that these younger choreographers are doing, but like, I add something, I have value, I can teach you something. Yeah. But the one thing that I push, I think with my dancers or anybody that I teach, not push, but or just try to instill yeah. is, is communication mm -hmm. because it, end of the day, even if you want to dance or not going to dance, mm. you have relationships. 
in relationships, as we know, even for working dancers, like how do you communicate? It's those skills. It's a skill set. If you go to interview for any kind of job, you have to be able to, hi, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm Whitney, you know, and mm -hmm. have that open communication. But I feel like a lot of dancers, we are in this way versus like, we want to be here. So, yeah. yeah. And nutrition, and nutrition definitely plays a part of that. You know, I mean, just the anxiety, the depression, gut health. I mean, again, Dr. B talks about this in this book, but um, yeah. so many of your um, uh, your neurotransmitters, you know, dopamine, serotonin, which are your how you feel, your happy feelings, yeah. like ninety percent of them are made in your gut. So if you're not eating healthy and gut health is off. Like literally that connection between this and down there is so vital. And if this is off down here and you're not treating your body well and not feeding it good, it's going to be really hard, yeah. even more hard to uh, feel energized and to feel positive. And so my encouragement is if you, if you are experiencing some of these things um, and right now, just with, you know, the situation going on, you know, it doesn't help, but um, I'm going to encourage you to eat more plant-based, eat the fiber. I promise you that's what all those neurotransmitters love yeah. and that in your immune system. So that's a lot of information I could talk about it forever, but um, that is, I think that's my advice is just really being open with yourself and, you know, loving yourself and doing like your darn hardest to like, think about, okay, what is my communication skill set? Like, am I, am I able to have a conversation? Am I able to put this down? My light's on the phone. Or am I able to put this down and walk away from it and not be curious what it's saying, you know, and be okay with that. I have issues with it. My husband tells me all the time. So I'm trying to be really mindful, like sure. really mindful. It's like, literally it's an addiction. Like people talk about drug addictions and it, you know, just, and I'm like, this is the worst addiction than like, it is worse. Yeah, it is. So mm -hmm. anyway. it's also, it's, it's an addiction that you're supposed to use all the time. <laughs> it's like, I know it's so great. Yeah. yeah. I just started doing a, um, every, for the, this is, this was my third Sunday where I sign off completely and we don't, we don't hang out with this at all, all day Sunday at all. That's a great idea. mom and dad. Love you probably not going to hear from me on Sunday. And that's literally just like to be like, I'm here. What's that? I'm not even going to take a picture of it. It's beautiful for this moment. <laughs> you know, we need to, no, be I, love touch. I think, I think my, my theory, and it's interesting that you say this too, because that's the main thing that Jeremy brought up um, as a director of, of a dance convention. So you guys are interacting with, a, you're, you're interacting with a large age range of dancers so you, and you're seeing them all over our country um you see shifts i mean quite frankly there's um there's a book i don't want to get too weird but there's a book called the coddling of the american mind and one of my mentors um she runs a, a university program for dancers and she said she's seen within just 10 years an evolution between the the performance of, of students 10 years ago is almost um dramatically night and day different than current, you know, but she saw the evolution each sort of three years was almost a new sort of pocket of, of, of change really around how students approach their work. And like you said, we wanted to be the best version of, of ourselves. And I think, um, I think that our, our communication and giving, giving young people a platform that is potentially global um, before the, the formation of their brains, even so 13 or eight or however, maybe four, um, it's too high stakes. I feel like it doesn't allow time for the, um, the trusting self process. Um, and it not being about who's watching, um, what, you know, what the profit is or the likes are, it's about you and that's it. Right. Yep. I'm, I feel so blessed that I grew up in that the years that I did that I didn't have that I think I got a phone and I was like honestly like right before I moved to New York I think obviously because I'm moving to Manhattan but right look back and I'm like man I just appreciate so much because literally I like I focused on school I focused yeah. on when I came home what did I do I sat with my parents and they asked me about my day 
versus now you look at the standard American table and people are like, yeah, what do you need? You know, it's, it's that instead of this. Yeah. So like something that's really important to me. Um, that's why I stopped teaching at a studio, honestly, at night, because I knew in my gut that I wanted to be the mom. Yeah. That, and that was present with my kids because I, we don't allow any technology with our kids. And granted, they're six and four, but like they don't have pads. You know, it's, it's harder for me because it's very easy to be like, here's your pad, go stare at that for an hour. And I'm not judging people that do it, I promise. Because um, there's times where I'm like, I want to do that, you know. Um, but mm. no, I, I, yeah, I agree with that 100%. It's that every single year, I feel like there's a decline and you see a change in the dancer. Mm -hmm. There's a few diets out there that I find around the country and you know I hate to say this but it's like I know you're gonna make it <laughs> you know I just I know that I know that they're 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 in it for the right reasons um and I don't know if a lot of sometimes I teach kids I'm like do you even like to dance you know or like right. do you like it it's kind of like some of them just look at me I'm like why are you here you know like this is hard work like this is this is no yeah. joke yeah I'm not saying you have to be a professional dancer because 80% of you won't be, but like yeah. you're here and this is like such a safe, such a safe and like, it's a haven to be here, you know, right. and I feel like we take advantage mm. of this amazing gift. And I, I do get, I find myself getting frustrated with that. And I've got to step back. I've got to remember, wait, Caroline, you didn't grow up yeah. in this generation. Yeah. So I have to think about how I'm speaking to them and, and having grace. Um, yeah. Encouraging them to, um, to be mindful of it and to really think about, you know, who is it that you are, you know, like, and why can't you go into the, like, I love Brene Brown. Like, why can't you, I want you to go into like that cave of fear that is fearful and, you know, and, or open up that treasure box that you're not quite sure what's in there and be like, wow, I have all these things and all these that I'm really awesome at. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think people have self-worth. I really don't, you know, and because everybody's a treasure box. <laughs> Everybody has something really wonderful to add to the table. But yeah. again, we compare. It's, it's, a, it's comparison. It's so much comparison. So then you actually get to the studio and you're like, well, is this good enough? I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I do it. You know, you see these younger dancers and choreographers and you like look at them on Instagram and you're like, wow, that's awesome. And then I get in the studio and I'm like, I'm worthy. I can do this. You know, it's, it's such a screwed up like so I'm getting there I'm definitely getting there actually quarantine for me was really good just to take a step back and just to be like just, I mean literally for a month I didn't dance and I like actually loved it <laughs> strangely and then <laughs> the itch I wanted to teach some yeah. so I did it virtually but but overall it was a it was a good moment I mean selfishly for me just to step back and say like what are my priorities the rest was phenomenal. And like, if I can give any dancer, any teacher, any director, like any just, I don't know, advice on something, it's that we are over training our dancers. I think there's a way to be more effective with our training. Wow. Like I was just teaching, I was teaching yesterday and I literally put the kids in this homeschool program and I'm like, they look like zombies. And I'm like, what, what are y'all doing here? <laughs> like, I love you, but you have got to rest. I'm like, and they're like, yeah, we have dance for five hours tonight. We're getting ready for, you know, convention jump next weekend. And I'm like, you, you, you need to be like resting. Like all uh, your, your injuries are going to happen during this time of vulnerability when your body's vulnerable and you're just like, they looked exhausted. And I felt bad for them because of course they're young and they just think this is, this is going to make me better. But in fact, it, it's not, <laughs> yeah. you know, so focusing on rest for dancers, I think, yeah. Is so important. I've never felt more rested. Just getting that solid eight hours of sleep a night during quarantine, not having to get up at 6 a.m. to get my kids ready for school. I mean, I even contemplated homeschooling. I was like, well, maybe I'm a homeschool mom, you know, like, I mean, I hell no. Changing. I'm not doing that. <laughs> but, um, but I think there's something to be said, like meditation, even in the dance studio. My great friend, Jade Whitmire, she's in Houston. She's phenomenal. Um, she does meditation with her kids in like breathing sessions and when she sees that they're exhausted like she stops wow. so i think it's just being more mindful of that and i think that yeah. i think we'll we'll be better versions of ourselves when we can we can be okay with that because i think as americans we're just well, americans in general we're just like 
go, go, push more, 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 you know, and more is not always better. And I am speaking to me, by the way, I'm speaking to the choir. Right. Because, yeah, I'm a pusher and I'm a, I have to do something every second, you know, and it's actually been really gratifying to be like, no, I can't do that right now, <laughs> you know, and say no to something. Yeah. I'm all bored, sorry with my thoughts, but. Um, no, you're great. I mean, I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I agree. And um, I was actually, it's cool to hear you sort of um, echo what another interview, the other interview with a personal trainer, quite frankly, spoke on. So I think it's, it's like, hey, these are the moments we need to listen. Um, Amber Tacey, she runs Dancers Who Lift out of New York. And so she's like, weight training dancers, let's go put it together. It's going to be good for you. And she said that six weeks actually is when I, 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 you know, she's got big vocabulary words, something about, um, yep. I'll have to look at my notes from our interview, but just what the body does anatomically speaking, where it actually starts to fully be able to repair itself again. She said studies recently have been showing that six weeks of rest is actually necessary. She was like, it's actually a miracle or it's, it's an awesome thing that a lot of dancers didn't get to go to their summer intensives this year or whatever. And she said, we've actually seen, you know, if, if you're looking for physique or fitness and, and trimming or whatever, she said, she's actually seen better results in her clients now due to rest more than ever before and how their bodies, bodies are reacting to it. Yeah, I agree to that. I know for myself, and because of your sleep is, that's your time of healing and rest and breaking from food, breath, breakfast, break fast, you know, like that's, that's why that's so important. A hundred percent agree. And weightlifting is when I discovered the gym and lifting a weight, the medicine ball, and you know, I don't lift like crazy weight, but like my whole physique changed. Like it was radical when I introduced cross training to my body. And I've always been a muscular woman, but yeah. Um, but it was, but my dancing and my dancing enhanced my lungs, my heart, like everything, my stamina just really grew. Um, so I really encourage you dancers to, you know, add those elements in. Um, Sugar Foot Therapy is a wonderful program to look at as well. I'm Katie Shar. Say it one more time. Uh, Sugar Foot Therapy. Okay. Katie Shar. Uh, okay. Her husband, Nick, they own Bodhi. It's like a huge personal training facility, not personal training, excuse me, physical therapy um, training center for, for all athletes, but a lot of dancers go there. It's based in Los Angeles and their online program is called Sugarfoot, but it's fun, it, it's the coolest thing. So just look up Sugarfoot Therapy and she's actually partnered with me and Apollo. Um, it's called the Artist and Athletes Initiative. And, and I have this actually full recording, if, you know, if anybody on the line would like to see it, we can send it to you, but it's uh, about an hour and 20 minutes and it covers, it covers nutrition, it covers psychological care, it talks about different tools and resources that a dance may help the dancer. And then she talks about cross training and physical therapy and who to work with, you know, what's the best choice and helping parents out that way. Okay, I'm gonna get that link from you and we'll make sure to send it out in the email with your interview so that people can um, actually get, yeah. So someone's asking more about that therapy, sugar foot, like sugar? Yeah, like sugar, <laughs> sugar foot Put therapy. Sugar on your feet? Yeah, um, it's, a, uh, it's a program where let's say you just had total ACL reconstruction you've been through your physical therapy, but you literally, it's, it's a, like a membership and you can say, all right, post, you know, ACL reconstruction. And you literally can go on there and find like the top five best exercises. So you see the physical therapist, the dancer, um, and they're telling you how to do it, what to do. They have full warm ups that are really beautiful, like dynamic stretching versus isolated. Yeah. So many dancers, the hypermobility and they sit in splits for hours. I'm like, stop, you sure. know? Um, it's the dynamic stretching that's before and then isolated, you know, like five, 10 minutes at the end. So I've been totally training dancers a totally different way after working with Katie and listening to them. I did like one of their teacher. Um, cool. Um, so they have a lot of beautiful things to offer. So I definitely would check them out. They're great. Are they specifically for uh, dancers or is it just very helpful? It's, yes, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's skilled towards dancers, but I'm telling you, like, if I was a coach for a basketball team or a football team, like, they would be doing it. <laughs> right. You know, it, 
Uh, okay. I mean, it can work in all modalities of movement, truthfully. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you heard of Z Health or biomechanics training with Z Health? I've heard of, not, Z, uh, I don't think so. The bio, I mean, I've done it the word biomechanics, but yeah. I'll send you, I feel like you'd be really interested since based on what you're talking about with sugar foot. I literally thought maybe there was something related with sugar and putting it on your feet. I was like, I've never heard of that. Like, I don't. These things need a good foot scrub, so that would be <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so we're getting close to Q&A time. Um, but I want to sort of wrap up. Yeah, I think I think you answered the question on like, you know, what you've seen as as like a major issue in I, I think that's a whole almost almost worthy of a whole other conversation at some point but i loved hearing it from your perspective around communication as a mom so thank you for sharing that with us because the reality is like if if we're not looking out for the next generation who is um if we're not going hey we need to create some boundaries and some definition around what's actually life-giving and what's actually helpful for your development, then they're not going to because they're, they're still forming and um, we're their best like covering and their best help. So I loved that. And I think it's important for us as facilitators or educators to pay attention to exactly, I feel like Caroline, you articulated it so well, they look like zombies. If they look like zombies, like what can you do inside of your program that, um, you know, helps put push pause and reset and puts the like the dancer back on the priority instead of what they're producing or what they, you know, need to get done in the moment is, uh, I think it's so good. And I think this year has actually, I'd like for you to maybe wrap up what your thoughts are on how to maintain the rest and not let it slip away as life starts to potentially get back to normal. That's so funny you said that well, I was because I just started like really traveling again and I've decided I'm cutting back, you know, what I normally have done just in general, cutting back a little bit of adrenaline and not because I want to, I love what I do. It's just, I know that because of this whole experience for me, just being home more with my children and hands and it's just been all better, you know, just overall, but I need balance <laughs> and you know, I, I noticed though, even just traveling, I had a great time in Utah last week, but just even being gone, as soon as I got back, I had that feeling. I felt like an itch inside of me. I was like, I know what's next. Like, I got to move. I got to go. I got to do something. Whereas actually on Monday, I should have just like, I did actually, sorry, but I had to like consciously think about it. Hey, Carolyn, this is a day of rest. This is a day of restoration. Um, so I think for, you know, for me, I really believe in writing out like, um, or first of all, I have a journal and I like to write out how I feel. If I hear something that inspires me, I like to write it down. Every single morning, I, um, I write down something I'm, I have gratitude towards. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, when I do that, it calms me down. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds me that like, it's okay to say no. It's okay to take a pass. Brene Brown always talks about that. She's like, give yourself a pass every day. Ooh. And yeah, like, it's like, literally, you could write. I, I've been, I've gone far to like write on pieces of paper. Like, you are allowed to say no. You are allowed to not work out today. You are allowed. And it's so silly, but like, when I look at it, I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> you know, it's like, I need this damn piece of paper to tell me that. Um, so I do stuff like that that just helps keep me in check. Um, I do, I, I have several friends in my life that they're not my accountability partners, but I have found my tribe of women that have definitely, especially for quarantine, it's been interesting. And these are brand new friends to me. Like I've known about them in my community, but um, my new friends like Katie and Hannah and Lori, like I just recently bonded with them and they have really kept me in check and like, really helped me realize just through their own, and they're not dancers. Well, one of them is, but the rest aren't. Just, you know, what helps them to, to, to stay at ease with not having to go, go, go. So I felt that feeling when I went to, to Utah last week and it was a great trip, but um, I think it's being mindful. And I think just really finding that deep inner connection and writing out your day. And it's okay if it's not filled. 
Like maybe you write down like, this is my 30 minutes of, I'm going to read this book. Do you know that this is, by the way, this is the first book I've read. I'm not kidding you in like 13 years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Pathetic because you know, I didn't have time. Yeah. No. So like I literally will the night before, like before I go to bed tonight, I'm going to write out tomorrow, just a sketch of it so I can see it. And then it helps me kind of keep on track. Just also as a mom, but then it also just allows me to write, wow, I have those two hours. Like I can, I can do those things that aren't going to like make my brain crazy. And it's okay. It's okay that it's okay that I'm not doing something every second. So that's helped me a lot. Um, and everybody has their own DMO and how they, you know, work every single day. But um, yeah. I know how I feel in this present moment. So I'm going to really every day write down my gratitude and just think about, okay, this time has been really precious for you and you found your balance, Caroline. So like, have, you know, like, let's keep doing these things. Every, and I did these things over quarantine and it really helped me. So I'm just going to stick with that. I hate to say, but a pattern, but like just that kind of mindset. And I know like I'm in, not next week, but I'm in LA and then Dallas for eight days coming up. And I know that's going to be wild and crazy and I'm going to be, yeah. you know, cross eyed and that's okay. Um, but I'm going to try to maintain um, those things while I'm there. Does that make sense? So yeah. While I'm trying, um, I always take five minutes, even if it's in the car. Sometimes I even just disappear and I go sit in my car and I literally will like just do deep breathing for five minutes and just sit there and close my eyes and just, yeah, you're just in and out for five minutes and I come back in. Yeah, totally. Um, so those, those things help me. I don't know if that answered your question, but those are the things that, 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 that guides me. And I stay consistent. I think consistency is such a big word and transparency, be open. I'm yeah. like an open book. If you make me feel a certain way, I'm going to tell you <laughs> in, a, in a positive manner, like even with hands, like I just, I just, I can't sugarcoat things anymore. I want to, I want you to know how I feel. I want to be transparent. I want to be honest. And when I have that honesty with them or people with me and with myself, yeah. I'm a better mom, a better wife, I'm a better, you know, artist. I sleep better. Just all those things that like can eat at you, you know, because you're thinking, oh, what do they think about me? What do you know? It's like, I can just, again, be like, poops, be gone. And hey, I told you how I felt. You know, I love you. This is how I feel. You know, if there is something that there's a trial or tribulation. I'm yeah. taking from you, you took Brene Brown's past. I'm taking poops, be gone. <laughs> Take that. My actually, one of my wonderful dear friends, her name is Chrissy Whitehead Disbro. She's amazing. But actually, Chrissy taught me that. She was teaching <laughs> these kids. She's phenomenal. She's been on, she revised um, Christine on Chorus Line and she was teaching one day and she was like, I need y'all to take your poops and be gone. I was like, that's amazing. And I literally, I've been using it ever since. I, she said it like three years ago and I'm like, hell yeah. That's it. it works. It's like magic. No, but I want to just like summarize what I heard you say, Caroline. I'm just like, first of all, gratitude, grounding us, grounding us out and away from comparison. When you were talking earlier about comparison, I thought, duh, we already have the in-studio comparison pattern and have it. Then when you add the outside platforms, we have double, if not, who knows, exponentially, how much com comparison ability we have to step into. We, we, could, we could be in it all day, quite frankly, if we wanted to. So, so how do we choose to just completely step across the line and go, I'm actually not hanging out in that at all. How do you actually fully step over here and stay over here? As soon as that thing wants to tempt you to get back into, um, you know, analyzing how you're doing compared to someone else, anyone else, how do we fully get back? I love that because when you're with yourself and you're resting, that's really essential for your artistry, your, your mental energy, and your ability to do anything that you're passionate about in general is when you're with yourself. You can't really do anything on the fumes of comparison and competition, right? No, you can't. And just, and just, be, bring, just be as consistent. That's what I tell dancers all the time. I'm like, just be consistent, you know, come here ready to, to be open and willing and work hard. And, but consistency, it's like, why do people not why do people fail at, I hate the word diet, but why do people fail at eating healthy? Mm -hmm. You know, because they go full force, like so hard and dive into something instead of making smaller gradual changes. And then therefore it changes the whole lifestyle picture. So 
um, be, be consistent. Yeah, you said patterns and you, you pointed out just even just like the journaling and the friends. So, and the transparency inside of those things. Um, I think we can't really be successful um, with anything unless we are, we've made a system for it to continue on. If there's a future system, so you don't, I don't know, I feel that little bit of anxiety. It came up while you were talking like, yeah, next year, what if I fall back into the pattern of busyness and doing too much? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Like I can set up a system for myself of friends who know me and they know when I look like a zombie or I sound like a zombie or being a zombie. <laughs> they can go, I can ask them to politely stop me from doing that. And have your tribe of people to help keep mm -hmm. you accountable those people that will be honest with you and pure love and yes. um, it's really good for me to find these women and they make me laugh every day. You gotta laugh every day too, by the way. I get the, I'm on this text thread with these five women and when I tell you we are all different, like there, it's like having a donkey in the room and a chicken. <laughs> and We're all so different. Fun. End of the day, like we really connect and just see each other for who we are and it's been so refreshing to just, I mean, it makes me laugh. And when I can laugh every day too, it yeah. changes. And like a belly laugh where you're like, it hurts. And you're like, I just worked my abs really hard. It's great. So <laughs> I encourage you to find that because it's, it's magical. It really is. Amen. All right. So good. Well, we've got a few questions for you real fast to sum up. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go through here. Okay. You talk to more. Um, okay, I like that question. We only have a little bit of time, so I'm going to pick a few of these here. Okay, so I like this question a lot. So from Lisa, how do you personally build a value for a healthy and holistic way of living, exercising, and eating in your beginner dancers? Ooh, beginner dancers. Um, I think what's really important, so I never use the word healthy with kids because I've, I've talked to like every range. I like to say grow, you know, what's going to help us grow and be the best versions of ourselves. So I like to talk about grow foods, um, you know, to help us be strong and um, be able to get through our dancing. Um, so I think when we're younger, well, first of all, I think it's, I could talk about this for an hour. I think it's really important that having a conversation with the families as well. Like if these are children that maybe are in your competition program or they're, you know, wanting to train to be better dancers, mm -hmm. I think, um, I mean, I'm happy, first of all, I'm happy to talk to them. This is something that I do. Like I've actually, you know, I speak a lot to parents because at the end of the day for these young children, like they're the ones that set the tone in the household. So when we can get the parents on board, not a hundred percent, but just for them to see the value of, Hey, this is going to help your child um, not only be the you know be the best dancer they can be, but also you know with rest, understanding what rest means to be a good dancer and athlete, to understand what eating healthier you know. And um, I always said if I had a studio that I would um, have definite like I would have a sit down with all the parents and just say like these are the ideals and you know the beliefs the belief system at the studio and not allow, you know, negative, I like to say negative foods in the space, because I do think it brings us down. It brings us down, obviously, nutritionally, but just emotionally, it drains us. We wow. can't focus. Um, wow. So I think, Lisa, if you want to reach out to me, I'm happy to talk to you a little bit more about that. I know we have to, I have to answer the questions quickly, um, but I'm totally down. If you want to get my um, email from Whitney or my phone number, um, I can, I want to, I want to dive more into that and be more thoughtful with you. That's that like, as I've never heard a studio owner or the potential studio owner even say, I would, I wouldn't even want us to bring negative foods into this. I mean, that is awesome. <laughs> oh, but it's, it's funny, but a lot of just, they don't, we, you know, and it's not to blame anybody. I just don't think we know. I would say no, the ninth country doesn't really understand how food affects us until you walk the walk. And then when mm -hmm. you see the differences, you know, where I've worked with people with like Hashimoto's and lupus and different diseases. And then like, yeah. when you give your body real food, it's magical how it changes everything. Not just, of course, your insides out, but just how you feel, how your brain feels, you know, and yeah, my encouragement. Yeah. Well, I think also 
we just we live in a culture where we are running on fumes a lot and we we, we unfortunately don't live a preventative lifestyle over here that much you know maybe as much as like an eastern culture may where they're real listening to their body is, is much more common and, and being communal in their lifestyle is much more common um being aware of nature not just like the, the mountains and the trees but like how we are connected to nature and plants um i think yeah i don't think we even know until it's too late usually and then we'll take the steps and then we'll take the actions so can we like teach it to each other bravely you know it's not offensive it's loving to share that kind of information yeah and one more thing i think i see kids be pushed at such a young age i mean there's five-year-olds that are doing stuff and i'm like wow you know? like that's crazy but like kids need to play too. <laughs> like they need to have that childhood. And so that's another thing that I would incorporate, you know, or I would think about Lisa is, you know, cause I think along, alongside of that, I think if we push kids so hard, they're so stringent, so strict on themselves. And they're like, I gotta be the best, you know, they're gonna be mad at me. You know, I think that if we can create a fun environment that is teaching them this, that skill set, and, you know, getting them prepared for the next step, but, you know, bringing in meditation to young children at a young age so they understand what it's like they're just to sit and close their eyes. I mean, a lot of schools are doing it now, you know, just for their children, especially over in Europe and um, more some Asian countries, but like they're literally teaching these kids how to breathe and how to relax. So I think doing that at a young age would be really, really important as well. Um, along with having a studio. What'd you say? <laughs> I said, I hope you open a studio someday, just for the sake of those dancers. <laughs> we have to be done by 6 p.m. though, and I don't think that's gonna happen, so. <laughs> I know, we have like four minutes. No, you're great. Um, I, I, we have a couple more questions, let's just choose one. Um, it's very similar. I think it's very, maybe it's a good wrap up question because it's, it's um, related, um, but she said, Yeah, it's, these are very related. So how do you create, or what do you do to create an environment in your classes of acceptance and confidence? I'd love to hear that as well. Maybe we can finish on that one. Ooh. I think, you know, I, I think, again, I'm using the word transparency and honesty, honest, honesty. I think sometimes people look at me, I've actually had people say this to me. They're like, well, you're so confident. You're so, you know, bold and you know just such a strong woman and I, I, there's several things there's so many layers to this i think my mom instilled that in me my mom left me alone when i as a child when i say left me alone there was no there was no hovering like mm -hmm. people never knew her but they didn't even know who my mom was sometimes they're like do you have a mom and i'm like yeah she's like you might see her in two weeks i don't know but she definitely when i was in the space let me understand disappointment understand what hard work meant it just she just let me be so i think there's any encouragement to any moms listening like i know it's hard and we want the best for our kids but you know just trust 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 the process and let them feel the disappointment because you know what they're going to be disappointed throughout their life yeah. and i think it was a wonderful skill set so when i was 18 and i moved to new york city i did have this confidence about me i did have this like willpower to go you know have i had ups and downs yeah all that you know i still have them now when mom died i had them like many times you know i doubted myself what am i supposed to be doing is this right for me mm -hmm. um but in the classroom, I'm just as real as I can be. And I think that if we put on a facade, you know, like everything is perfect and I'm just me. And I think when people can see the layers of me, you know, and that I am transparent and sometimes, you know, maybe, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'm too open. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I feel like, I feel like kids relate to me because of that. Yeah. because there is no i'm gonna say bs but there is none of that mm -hmm. and i really like to train the six seven seven eight year olds like how i do 18 19 year olds i mean it's just we are here we're here to be open um you know i have expectations you have expectations what are your expectations of yourself and i think just building that like fun hard work atmosphere is what kids crave i really do think they do yeah um, and 
but I want to show them my imperfections. Yeah. Because the imperfections are what that, that that's that that's reality. We all have them, and there's no. And that's also why I hate social media too, and these filters and all this stuff because that's what they think is real. But oh then, the, dude, this is, you know, this is. <laughs> And talking about experiences, I always bring my mom up in class for the most part. It's always like a part of my, I feel yeah. like it's fine to me spiritually, you know, in terms of my dancing and what, what moves me. Um, and talking about stories and how does those stories help build your intention when you dance? And um, sorry, again, there was so many All layers right. off the topic, but you know. No, I, I, I think transparency being real and transparent because kid, and kids know I was talking to a woman the other day her husband passed away and her kids and she had to share something or she was wanting to hold back something that I knew that they already knew and I'm like girl they know like kids are so smart they're so smart and they're probably more intuitive than we are as adults you mm -hmm. know the seniors I'm like see those minis over there you don't need to have, like those minis y'all just need to have fun and perform and shake it and just get over yourselves, <laughs> you know? That's, That's why I love it. Because one of the, the last question that just came in was that we're talking about kids needing to play. And Ariana said, I feel like a lot of adult creatives need to learn how to play as well. What would be a suggestion for them to incorporate that into their lives? It's fun. Have a child? I don't know. Um, have a kid. <laughs> have a baby. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, with like, I've done this even with improv is like in free form and improvisational skills, like not just, you know, different modalities of moving, but like put on Disney moves, music, put on different di things that you would never think about expressing yourself to, you know, like yeah. I love, to sing. I love to sing. I think I'm Beyonce, even though I know I'm not, I like can kind of hit a note, but um, I love to sing in class. Do you know how hard, I mean, I'm sure you've seen this. Dancers are horrified to sing, horrified to open their mouth. They're like, they're like this. Ah. I mean, they really like go. So I think incorporating singing at a very young age, at yeah. least um, something else to like think about for young programs. But, and I don't mean choir or like full on voice lessons, but start incorporating them being expressive through their voice, you yeah. know, and singing and singing. Cause at the end of the day, let's get real. Who are the dancers that make it? For the most part, they can sing, they can dance, they can act. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, they really can do all those things. And I think that's when we learn that expression and that confidence at a young age. Cause like I have, I mean, I could sing you a song right now and at like, it's the best thing in the world just because it's fun, you know? And am I a good singer? Hell no, right. but I, it's awesome, you know? So totally. I think pulling that in at a young age, singing, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah. Again, I'm all over the place. I have so many thoughts. No, it's so good. I mean, the reality is, um, what I hear you saying is, again, low stakes. Low stakes. Playing. And I think that this year actually has been a giant invitation for us to take things back down to low stakes because we were kind of building up momentum for maybe, honestly, we were creating a lifestyle for us that I think a lot of people are legitimately recognizing that they needed a pause from. Yes. I've heard a lot of gratitude for the pause, but I'm going like, we're going to need to collectively work together to not repeat the same thing that, you know, the insanity cycle. Um, we do have to, our, what's that? I was say one more thing. And I think as parents, we have to do that. Like yeah. these children need our guidance in terms of that. So, because at the end of the day, who sets up the private, the parent, you know, so like totally. just, push so hard like let them be like take a chill pill and I promise you like letting them have some relaxation and rest is only going to enhance them as a dancer but also just as a person person yeah okay I really want to make sure that this link that you've got for this like this this free you said an hour and 20 minutes it covers yeah. nutrition it covers I'm going to make sure that we get that to you guys um in the email tonight so I'll get that from you, Caroline, but thank you so much. We're about to move into the giveaway session. So we're going to say bye to Caroline. Um, thank you guys, everybody, for your questions today. If you sent in a question, it entered you into our giveaway for today with Gina Pirro. But Caroline, thank you so much for your time tonight, your genius, 
I, I just I honestly we could keep talking for like another hour on all the things but you've got a family to go tend to as well so yeah. for the um, opportunity and if anybody wants to reach out to me if you have more detailed questions feel free to I'm happy to we've got lots of have lots of things in my laptop that I can that I can shoot your way so feel free yeah thanks for your info as well on gut health I think um, me and sauerkraut are gonna hang out a lot for the rest of the year and just good fiber yeah, girl. <laughs> Thank you Perfect. so much. You're Bless welcome. Good night. Bye. If you just, yeah, perfect. Okay. All fun. Bye, Caroline. So fun. All right, you guys, it's time for giveaway time. So I wish that I could hear the drum roll, please. I like your comment, Lisa. Have a baby. Yeah. Or adopt a baby or, or however it goes for you. I, I'm on that vein and um, I would like to just have a child around me. I'm working on it just like playing with my cat right now, but um, play is so, so important to us. And it's just um, something we don't, we don't like let it, we really do create ruts in our minds about how much we should be doing all the time. And we just have to, we've got to have a serious culture switch, culture switch all the way. So I'm, um, I'm pretty excited. Uh, to announce that today, the winner of today's giveaway, it's a tank top, I believe, from Jean Apiro, and she is a dance coach. Um, she, not just coaching the technique, she coaches mindsets for dancers. Um, she, how do I explain Jean Apiro? Gosh, she's like a transformation coach. Gosh, she's like a guru. I adore her. She was um, maybe our eighth or ninth guest on this summit you can watch her interview and she's leading a group called the pirouettes um which it's like a it's like a i don't know how long i think it's a six month journey of, of dancers coming together and talking about their vision and um their inner inner doing inner work together so lisa bruda vanderlaan you are the winner for tonight's giveaway which is so much fun so let us know that you um, can see that, that you got it. I will make sure to, I guess on Facebook, it's, it's PMU. On Instagram, it's DMU. But I will make sure to PMU and get your address, et cetera, for Gina to send you your free tank top. And um, for every tank top that, that is purchased from her organization, it's a nonprofit organization that actually um, sends a, gosh, it's like a, it's something for a school, uh, dancers with scoliosis that help um, help them in their training and help them in what they need for, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes, whoop, whoop, love it, so fun. You guys, thanks for joining tonight. Um, thank you for being here, thank you for being live. And I hope you enjoyed that. That was, Caroline had so much rich content and, and stuff to say, so um, I'm like, I just wanna pick her brain even more. We're gonna pop off though. Um, I appreciate your participation. Send this out to your friends. Let them know that this is an event is going on tomorrow. We have an entrepreneur coach. So a podcast host of Dance Boss. So if you have business questions, honestly, she's pretty thorough on, on her content and how to set yourself up as a, a salesperson, even though you don't necessarily want to, how to actually help um, your, your business get sales. Um, dance boss. Her name's Erin Pride. Also, I want to make an announcement that tomorrow is the first day that our e-course, The Vital Dancer Approach, is actually going live um, to be purchased. Cool, cool. Um, to be purchased, and it is a six-week course that is actually a ton about what we've been talking about on Take Back 2020. Um, we go into mindsets, we go into blocks, we go into patterns and cycles of why we stay small as dancers. Um, we go into finding out and digging into your personal why a ton and just how to eliminate comparison and competition from your, you know, your practice um, to make that foreign and unfamiliar to you. Um, and then we talk about how to get real on your goals 
and your like your annual goals, your monthly goals, your specific habits on how you're going to build those in, in order to, to move quicker and more efficiently into the dreams that you have as a dancer, instead of staying stuck in some of the things that we really get stuck in, right? So emotions, we talk about your emotional health, we talk about your mental health, and then we talk about things that are going to um, create the systems, like we talked about with Caroline, create the systems to help make it easier to get where you want to go, right? Um, it's called the Vital Dancer Approach, and we're we're giving this um, to the Take Back 2020 audience for a crazy price um, as well. So, and the first 15, I think the first 15 people that sign up for the course actually get a free um, 40 minute consultation. So coaching clarity session with me, which is like, yeah, it's an awesome combo, the e-course and a session with me together, but it's only for the first 15 people that go for it. So you guys, um, the course is actually being sold for 197. It will never be sold for that price again. Um, I'm like super stoked to just actually get this out into the world for as cheap as possible because I think Take Back 2020, or in general, the year 2020 has just been not so kind. Um, to us. And so I'm just like, I'm in the giving mood and I want us to be able to get some foundations set really well around your mindsets and, and how you think about yourself as an artist, as an athlete, and as an entrepreneur. So you guys check that out. The link's going to be going live tomorrow. Um, I'll give you a, I'll give you a link tonight. I'll give you the links to Caroline. And I'm just so appreciative. You guys have been an incredible audience. It's been, a, it's been an awesome opportunity to learn with you. Um, I love you. Hope you go just take care of yourself. It's almost election week. If you're in the US, just stay calm. We're going to be okay. We're going to get through this together. All right, you guys. Have an incredible evening. And uh, let me know you're watching live. If you tag, sorry, I forgot to say, if you tag Move True on Instagram and you let us know that you're watching live, that also enters you one person to get into the giveaway for a free coaching session with me just free free coaching session tag us on at move true underscore on instagram all right i'm done rambling you guys mwah. big hugs have an amazing evening okay